Hello everyone and hello to Invest97L. This is a new tropical area of development that we are watching in the Northwestern Caribbean Sea and this is actually expected to become our next tropical storm over the next few days and perhaps a big hurricane as it moves to the north eventually into the Gulf of Mexico. Now computer models are getting a much better consensus on where this will likely be heading towards and as well as the potential intensity of this tropical storm or hurricane as it moves into the Gulf of Mexico. So without further ado, we're going to jump right into what we're expecting out of this over the next few days. So we do have three areas of potential development across the Atlantic Ocean, but the one that we're going to be talking about today is in the Western Caribbean Sea. This area now has an 80% chance of development over the next seven days, which means that this is likely to become a tropical storm. And if it does become a tropical storm, we are expecting a hurricane. Another thing to keep in mind is that we do have a 40% chance of development over the next 48 hours. If this develops anytime before Tuesday evening, this could be a big problem and it could very easily become an intense hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico purely due to the fact of timing and also the ingredients that are available in the Gulf of Mexico. One other area of development that we'll talk about more in a future forecast is all the way back over in the eastern Atlantic Ocean. The reason why we might have to talk about this is that there are models that are hinting that this could be going towards either the Caribbean Sea or even towards the Bahamas and perhaps the United States and this one also looks like it could become a big hurricane so we'll have to watch that one closely but again we're we're mostly focused on this area of development today. You probably heard me use the word invest. That essentially means that the National Hurricane Center is now officially investigating this area of low pressure that has just developed just off to the east of the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. This is an area of just some disorganized convection right now. But overall, we are starting to see trends that this is becoming a more organized area of convection. And by tomorrow afternoon or evening, we actually could begin to see maybe even a tropical depression form over the northwestern Caribbean Sea as this continues to slowly drag to the north and northwest. Over the last few days, we've seen a lot of fluctuation with computer models when it comes to intensity, the timing of landfall, and exactly where this tropical storm or hurricane will go. But I do think there's more clarity starting to build with where this will go. Now, until we officially have a tropical depression, I do think it's going to still be a little bit up in the air exactly where this will be going. But I think models are starting to get a better grasp of where this will be heading and how intense this could get. So let's jump right into the ensemble members and give you an idea of where this could track and how intense this could get. This is what it looks like by tomorrow afternoon. There are several ensembles in the Northwestern Caribbean Sea that do bring this down to around a tropical depression type level or still an invest by tomorrow afternoon. So imminent development still remains, I would say, unlikely. Once we go into Tuesday afternoon, that is when a lot of ensemble members and computer models in general start to actually intensify this rather quickly. Now here's where the big catch 101 is going to be with this tropical system. If this is able to develop by Tuesday afternoon into a tropical storm or even closer to a hurricane, this I do think has a very high ceiling, meaning we could see a major hurricane potential in the Gulf Coast of the United States. Now, if it's still a tropical depression or a low end tropical storm by Tuesday evening, I think that the ceiling is much lower and we'll probably be talking about somewhere between a category one and maybe a high end category two hurricane. So that's my thinking as of right now. I think Tuesday is really the biggest day of the week when it comes to the intensity of this. Depending on how intense it gets by Tuesday, I think makes a major difference as we go into the rest of the week. By Wednesday, a lot of the ensemble members start to intensify this storm very rapidly. A lot of the members bring this down to at least a Category 1 hurricane. Some actually bring this up to a Category 2 hurricane by Wednesday afternoon and evening. There are still a few ensemble members that I would say are outliers that keep this into a higher end or lower end scenario, I should say, of a maybe low end tropical storm. And once we go into Thursday, a lot of the members do have this going right into Florida or even the coast of Alabama as at least a Category 1 or 2 hurricane, but several of these bring it close to Category 3 status as we go into Thursday. But again, notice the spread here. We have a very large spread of various models here that keep it anywhere from like the central Gulf of Mexico all the way back up into Georgia by Thursday at lunchtime. That is a massive spread, meaning landfall still remains quite uncertain on when that's exactly going to happen. Happen. Until we have a tropical depression, I think that does remain uncertain on when this is going to make landfall. But I do think it'll make landfall sometime between Thursday late morning, and it could make landfall as late as very early Friday morning. So that's the current timing as of right now. There are a couple of outliers that keep this in the Gulf of Mexico all the way through Saturday into Sunday. But again, those are outliers. They are very unlikely to happen. One trend that's been pretty concerning over the last 24 hours is that a lot of the ensemble members with the GFS are indicating a stronger hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico. 
Mexico this week. And the general idea is that a lot of these bring this system anywhere from southwest Florida all the way back over to western Louisiana. Granted, it's a large spread, so this could make landfall basically anywhere in this area. But one thing that we are noticing is that a lot of the consensus right now is that this is becoming a little bit more likely to make landfall somewhere between the Big Bend of Florida all the way back over to southern Alabama. So that's the range, I would say, that's a better shot of happening. Still a low chance it could go somewhere outside of that area, but I think we're getting a better idea with the steering factors that this is more than likely to go towards the Florida Panhandle or somewhere back over in southern Alabama. With that said, the intensity of this still remains up in the air, but a lot of the ensemble members are bringing this down to at least a Category 2 or 3 hurricane here in the northeastern Gulf of Mexico as we go into late Wednesday and also into Thursday. Again, this could change, but that's right now what a lot of the members are showing. There are still some that are still lower than that at a Category 1 level. Some are as high as a Category 4 level, so it's a very large range right now, and I think as we start to see this develop more here in the northwestern Caribbean Sea, it'll become more likely that we'll know where this will actually be going and how intense this will get. And some new information that we are also getting is that we now have Invest 97L with the intensity of this from various computer models. Now, as we go later into this evening, we are going to get a better idea from a lot more models on what they think the intensity of this storm could be. Notice its peak, though, as we go closer to late Wednesday into early Thursday, is anywhere from a Category 1 to a Category 3 hurricane. I think that's a very appropriate range for landfall here along the Gulf Coast of the United States. So overall, this is our you know beginning idea of where we think the intensity will be. I could see this going up, though, over the next few days, depending on how fast this system develops. I do want to show you two different scenarios that could happen with this, one of which would be basically worst case scenario, and one of which, which is basically best case scenario at this point for this tropical system. And we're going to begin with the GFS model, which essentially would be worst case scenario. This is by Wednesday afternoon. The GFS model has this rapidly intensifying in the northwestern Caribbean Sea and eventually entering into the Gulf of Mexico as an intense Category 3 hurricane. And then once we go into Thursday and into early Friday, this eventually moves into the western parts of Florida near Panama City as a very intense hurricane. 932 millibars of pressure is near Category 4, even close to Category 5 intensity. And then by early Friday morning, this moves up into Georgia and Alabama, posing a risk for some flash flooding, some tornado activity, and also some hurricane force winds still being a possibility. Now, personally, I think the track of this does make sense. I do not feel like the intensity will be necessarily that high, though. This is what the European model shows, which would be more of a best case scenario at this point, indicating a much slower development by Wednesday afternoon as just a low end tropical storm. And then once we go into Thursday, this quickly moves towards the Big Bend of Florida, still as a tropical storm, and then perhaps briefly a Category 1 hurricane upon landfall in Florida during Thursday evening. But again, notice it's a very large storm. Neither either way, basically, this is going to be a large storm, I think, bringing lots of rainfall and a large wind field of tropical storm force winds that could be as far west as areas like Louisiana, and it could be as far south as South Florida. So I think it's going to be a very large range of where we see the wind field. I think the intensity, though, is the one thing that we still do not know for sure what's going to happen there. I think there's going to be a middle ground here, though. I think that, you know, the European model is too conservative. I think the GFS model too aggressive. I think we're going to be talking about some sort of Category 2 or 3 hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico. But again, it's going to depend a lot on what happens over the next few days. So make sure that you are subscribed to the channel and we'll continue to give you updates on Invest 97L as it continues to become more organized and likely becomes our next tropical storm in the Gulf of Mexico. You can expect another video probably tomorrow morning. So make sure that you click the bell icon down below so you're notified when the latest update comes out.